I, I need to go, first of all, to a simple anecdote of your Kiev. You were educated in Kiev. You have seen the transformation over 20 years. How does Kiev recover back to what you knew when you were younger? How do, how do you see that happening? Actually, Kiev changed dramatically for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, before the war, it looked like a uh, normal European city, capital of the European country. So you may, uh, you, you was able to enjoy the restaurants, clubs, uh, shopping malls, and so on. Definitely change, uh, uh, change was sizable since the beginning of the war. So Kyiv was completely empty in March, April. Mm -hmm. So nowadays the life is uh, recovering, coming back, coming back, yeah. but uh, right. still you feel. Uh, you feel the consequences of, of the war on a, on each step. Gorgieva of the International Monetary Fund has a few distractions away from your war. Mm -hmm. What is your unique message to the International Monetary Fund as you cry for help? What is the distinction you say versus all the other headaches they have around the world? Uh, definitely Ukraine needs the support from the International Monetary Fund. So we are very uh, grateful for the International Monetary Fund for providing us $1.4 billion uh, under the RFI at the beginning of the war. But uh, so far we need more and uh, we are ready to engage into the uh, full-fledged uh, uh, program. So, in, uh, mainly, uh, so mainly we focus our efforts in order to launch the uh, EFF program of the large scale and uh, the authority are fully functional and ready to uh, negotiate and to discuss the policies uh, for mm -hmm. in order to uh, to launch uh, such type so of program. Sergey, we've been talking a lot about central bank rate decisions over the past week, uh, and we've gotten a lot of them in the past 24 hours. You recently kept the rate unchanged. How do we even have monetary policy and try to keep a normal sense of monetary transmission in the face of a war, in the face of such incredible disruption in day-to-day -day, uh, commerce that it becomes sort of not really a main feature? Yeah, definitely. Our uh, approach to the monetary policy changed dramatically since the beginning of the war. Before the war, we uh, relied on the inflation targeting framework, very similar to many other central banks all around the world. But at the beginning of the war, we uh, uh, we uh, moved to another setup. We started to rely heavily on the uh, stability of the exchange rate. Uh, we supported our actions on a fixed market with uh, uh, tough capital controls and uh, after some period of uh, adjustment uh, so when we keep kept the interest rate uh, stable at 10 percent in early june so we raised it to 25 percent in order to uh, help ourselves to uh, to maintain the stability of the exchange rate and uh, um, last two uh, our last two monetary decisions we were to keep this interest rate at 25% at the same time so as you rightly mentioned so we struggled to improve the monetary transmission which was not perfect before the war and definitely it's uh, uh, it is uh, even worse uh, since the beginning of the war but so far we see that uh, our decisions so they they are translates uh, right. they are translated into the banking rates more or less uh, as we expected and uh, we hope hope that uh, tighter monetary conditions right. will help us to maintain the f uh, stable exchange rate. What will it take on the fiscal side? And you were talking about the IMF aid and how much you might potentially need. How much would you need and how long would it take overall to rebuild the economy in a way where you could go back to something more akin to normalcy? Okay, so frankly speaking, the losses from the war are mm, tremendous. So that uh, uh, relates both to the current situation when we have a huge uh, budget gap, which we have uh, to help to finance uh, from the central bank uh, side. And actually this year we already provided mm -hmm. uh, uh, more than $10 billion to, 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 the, to the government in order to support the essential needs, uh, financing the essential needs. And at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, uh, that puts uh, right. sizable pressure on the fixed market. Yeah. You are, you, we're running out of time here, Governor, and mm -hmm. so I've got to keep this short and abrupt, and I'm being rude in, mm -hmm. in doing that. 
Ukraine has had a courageous two weeks. The news flow has been extraordinarily good in the military front. What do you need from the allies right now? What do you need from Mr. Biden and the West right now? Mm, definitely, we need the continuation of the support, both on military front and also uh, and also continuation of financial aid. So we uh, prove uh, to the whole world that we have uh, we, we may uh, uh, we may we may win, and uh, we hope that with the continuation of the support from the democratic world, we will achieve the victory yeah. as, as as soon as possible. 